Okay, we're first going to start with the most basic quadratic equation, and it's just y equals x squared. So I'm going to do a table of values to figure out what's happening. So if x is negative 2, what is negative 2 squared? Before I even ask that, what one is that? If I say what is negative 2 squared, when I plug in negative 2, which one would I like to type in my calculator if I did type it in? Brackets. Do you understand that this is wrong? These are different ideas in math. This says what is negative 2 squared. This says what is 2 squared times negative 1 after. That's what bed math says. They're different. Okay? So this is what I want. This is what I, not, I don't want. Okay? I get people who just type it into your calculator and then it gets typed in wrong. So typing this in is completely wrong. That's not what you want. So what is the answer? Positive 4. Okay, what would it be if I did negative 1 squared? Positive 1, right? What is 0 squared? 0, 1 squared, 1, 4, and 9. So I'm going to graph these, so it would be the coordinate negative 2 comma 4. a coordinate negative 1 comma 1, 0, 0, which is called the origin, one comma one, two comma four and three comma nine. I'm also going to do another point. Do you notice how these have partners? These have partners. What's the partner point to this one? Negative three comma nine. Okay, so when I connect them, they're gonna make a shape that looks like a U. Don't make it pointy at the bottom. It's a, it's a U shape. And then I'm also gonna place arrows on it because what could be the next coordinate on the right-hand side? Four. Four comma... What height? 16. Five comma 25, right? It would keep going. <clears throat> okay, when we graph these quadratics, they have... kind of like you had a slope last year on your line, we have a slope pattern. It's not the same, it's not a rise over run. So the pattern would be like this. If I was to move over one, the height should go up by one. If I head out two, how much should the height go up by? Four. If I was to head out 3, the height should change by 9, etc., etc., right? 4, 16, 5, 25. Okay, the name of this shape is called a parabola. So a U shape is called a parabola. You're always going to have arrows on it, this shape. There is one specific point where everything is based around, so everything is symmetric around which point on this one. What's the one special point, do you think? Zero, zero. It is called the vertex. It's the only one who doesn't have a partner to it, right? There's a vertical line that I could cut it in half. 
This is called the axis of symmetry. So if you were to slice it in half, where you could fold it like a sandwich, this is where I would cut it, right? And that line is, how do you make a vertical line from grade 10? What did you do? Do you remember the equation of a vertical line? Did that in grade 10? X equals And x equals, and it will have to be dependent on where you're going through with your vertex. Do you remember this from grade 10? In grade 10, this is the line x equals 2, and this was the line y equals 2, right? You remember that now? And you did verticals and horizontal mm -hmm. lines? Because Every single point has a x value of 2 on that line, no matter where you are. If you're on this line, what's going on? Anywhere has a y value of 2. Okay, in grade 10, you learned this word called domain. Domain is the, all the x values, all the possible x values. And when you talk about domain in math, you have to go in an order, kind of like reading a book. You go from left to right. So how far left does this graph go? What does it mean with my arrows, arrows, arrows? It's going to go on and on and on and on and on forever left. So how do I write that in math? Negative infinity. It's going to go forever left. And what do you think about the right-hand side? It's going to head out, 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 out to the right. So positive infinity. Do you remember that word now, domain? The range. So the range of something talks about the y values of something. And when you talk about y values, you always got to go in the order of what's the lowest to the highest. Okay, we are going to have two different looking parabolas. So here's the two different parabola options. You might get a parabola that looks like this, and you might get one that's actually flipped upside down. So here, the lowest would be some height, so some exact number, and then the arrows go up. So that's what it would look like, right? Some specific number, and then upward. And then do you notice how I put a square bracket to show you some exact number? Okay, this one is different. What's the lowest? Where are you heading to? What's the lowest? Negative infinity is the lowest height because you're headed down forever to the highest height of, and then it'll be depending on what where that point is, right? Okay, and that's the basics of everything that we're going to do. Okay, 
so let's take the basic y equals x squared and then let's do some stuff to it. So here I did the x squared, but then I subtracted one after. Okay, so let's get some coordinates. Here's my math. I'm going to go negative 2 squared, which is 4, and then subtract 1 after the 4. So that is a 3. Negative 1 squared was 1. Subtract 1, 0. 0 squared is 0. Subtract 1. Can you finish those num last two numbers out? Okay, so I need you to graph these coordinates. Negative 2 comma 3, negative 1 comma 0, 0, negative 1. Okay, so what happened to my original? This was my original, and now I'm here. So what physically happened to it in words? Where did it move? Which direction did it all move? Down. It went down one. Right? Do you see it physically? Okay, so do we have a conclusion? When there's a number at the end, it's going to move it up or down. So what's going to happen to this one? It's going to move the parabola up three. So I'm just going to draw you a simple sketch to show you this is what the new parabola would look like. Something like that, right? I'm going to take this and it's all going to get moved up three. Okay. That's the up-down moves. Now let's check out this. Okay, so if I plug some coordinates in, I'm going to have to think about bed mass here. I have to put the number into the bracket and then square it after. So negative 2, or sorry, negative 1, subtract 2 in the bracket. Do you have a negative 3 in your head now? Yeah. Squared is 9. 0 in the bracket. 0 subtract 2. Now I have a negative 2. Squared is 4. 1 subtract 2. Do you have a negative 1 in your head? Squared is 1. 2 subtract 2 is 0. So squared 0. 3 subtract 2 is 1, squared is 1. Can you graph those coordinates? You don't need to do the 9 one because you can't fit that on there. That's fine. So just 0, 4, 1, 1, 2, 0, 3, 1. Something happened to my parabola. My new parabola did what compared to the old one? It moved right to. Okay, this is weird because look at. In the equation, it has a subtracting 2, but you actually moved it right to. So this is kind of opposite of what your brain is probably going to think, right? When you see a subtract, you probably don't think going right on something. 
but it causes the opposite reaction. Okay, prediction then. Which way are we going to be moving? My prediction is to go left. My parabola will move left. Okay, what does this mean? So bed mass is always getting followed with this stuff, right? So you would need to square the X number and then times it by negative one as an afterthought, right? That's how bad mass works. So what is negative two squared? So positive four, then negative four. Does that make sense what I'm doing? I'm squaring it and then after times it by negative one. So negative one squared is actually positive one, then after it gets times by a negative. So I'm going to graph this. Okay, so the conclusion is, if there is a negative multiplier, what physically happens? It flips or reflects over the x-axis. I'm okay with just saying flip, but in grade 12, we're going to specifically call that, that's a reflection over the x-axis on the equation. Don't use the word down, because that's confusing with shifting down, right? It flips. Flips it. Okay, two more to go. So this one is the same idea. You're going to square it, and then after you've done that value, you're going to have to times that number by 3. So negative 2 squared, finish that, is 4 times 3, so now I get to 12. Negative 1 squared is positive 1, now times the 3. 0 times 3. Okay, don't graph the 12s, that's too much, so let's go just the 3 coordinates. If this multiplier is bigger than 1, that's what, ha what I was doing. Any multiplier that's a bigger number, what does it cause? What is this physically doing to it, do you think? It's going to narrow it. That makes sense as a word. The arms of it are now skinnier. It narrowed it. So now, what do you think? So this time I put a multiplier in front of there that was a fraction, so less than one. And what's the prediction to the arms of the parabola? They're going to head out wider. So 
So just to give you an idea now, my parabola is going to be wider. Okay, I put all that in a box for you here, a conclusion. So if I put a multiplier in the front, so this is the multiplier in the front. We could reflect or flip if it was negative, right? It would narrow if the A was bigger than 1. It would narrow. It would widen if that was less than 1. And then if there was a number inside the brackets, I wrote here that it will move left, right, oppositely, right? So a plus number will move left, and a subtract will actually move right. That's an opposite of what your brain will want to say, right? And if there was a number at the end, it would move up or down. So a plus would move up, and a subtract will move down. And that's normal brain mode. Okay, so tell me what all happens here. There's three answers to this. So you should tell me something about that, that, and that. There's three answers. So I need three words. What will all happen here? So multiplying this by two will narrow it. Three, in which direction will this now go? It will move three in the which direction? Three left, because that's an opposite brain. And then this will move five down. Okay, second question will have two answers. So a negative multiplier will make it flip. So it will look like that. And one to the right. Okay, this last question you're going to do, it has three words. I'm looking for three words. Go for it. You have to have three answers there. How did we do? Did you get all three? It flipped because of the negative, and then the five narrowed it, and then plus seven is up. Okay, in your work booklets, you're going to jump into page one and two. That should be called lesson one. So one and two. Page one and two. And you can keep that box in your name if you want to take all of this. Okay, so it's page one and